Red flag, bitch. Sup, though, shows, woes, shut, clothes, clock, sh but shut. <laughs> the following scary videos are fairly new to the internet and have the lowest view counts I could find. Some even had no views at all, making you the first person to ever lay eyes on them. Number 10. A landlord named Jill Prevost is in the basement of a rental property when she sees a furious house cat guarding the top of the steps. Damn. The angry, hissing animal descends upon her within seconds. Watch this part and you'll see the cat attack her purse with all of its might. Oh no shit! Jill simply holds it in front of her for protection, otherwise the rampaging animal could have easily been climbing up her leg. <laughs> there is nowhere to run except past the cat up the stairs. Once upstairs, she immediately grabs a broom and remains stuck in the house until the owner comes back. Get away. Hell no. This cat just attacked me. This video is definitely bizarre until you re- You better beat the shit out of that pussy. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh shit. <laughs> Cause I definitely want to beat the shit out of the I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't know I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> oh my but I mean, come on. Look at your size and then look at the cat. Can't you just like literally and I don't promote animal abuse, but like you have to protect yourself. Can't you just like just like kick the little motherfucker? Like kick him, you know, or her. Like kick the little shit. Like get the, get him off of you. Like fuck, you kick it. I would have kicked it. Not not like, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kick it like a motherfucking football. But I'm gonna do like a little like all right, fuck off, me, you know. <sighs> Beat that pussy up. <laughs> Cats instinctively go for areas that cause the most damage, like the face or throat, though it may be a domestic house cat. It is nonetheless protecting its territory with everything it's got, so who knows what would have happened if the owner had not come to Jill's rescue in time. Number 9. Bayrose H is certain that his house is haunted and claims this video is proof. For some reason, his little dog TJ is always growling at the corner of his bedroom. Come the fuck on with that shit. Come on. If your dog is barking at what you think is nothing, put down the, the phone or whatever you're using to recording, grab your dog and get the fuck up out of there. Unless your dog is in cahoots with the thing that it's barking at, then leave your dog right there and then you get the hell on. And if it's you... Oh, shit. See, uh-uh, you got me. Are you miss Oh, my God. What the fuck? Bay Rose shows that there is nothing of interest in the corner besides some old suitcases. Yet TJ refuses to give up. Eventually, TJ tracks something leaving the room that is undetectable to the human eye. Exactly what this dog was seeing is anyone's guess, but I think it was most likely a spiritual presence of some kind. Perhaps some kind of intense event once took place here and left a paranormal energy behind. Number 8. A young boy is watching television by himself and starts making a video for fun. After a while, he needs to do something in another room, so he puts the phone down for just a minute and accidentally records this creeper at his window. Someone peeks through the window multiple times over the course of a minute. Oh my God. I think those might be metal bars on the windows. So maybe this area has been dealing with break-ins, in which case there is about to be another. Then again, this strange floating orb appears as soon as the figure disappears. So maybe this is some kind of paranormal intruder instead. Number 7. Upbeat Jason puts on a helmet cam and rides around the neighborhood with his friend on BMX bikes. The video is mostly a nice view of the countryside until he comes across some neighbors with aggressive dogs and no leash. Jason tries to get past them instead of taking another way around. 
and suddenly finds himself flanked on both sides. Oh, shit. <laughs> A dog lunges straight at Jason, jaws snapping. I don't think they make any contact, but I can tell by the sound of their bark that they are ready to attack. Clearly, they would have protected their territory if Jason stuck around, which he does not. But just when he thinks he is a safe distance away, he hears barking behind him and the chase is on again. <laughs> Eventually, an adult picks them up and quickly puts their bike in the back of their truck before anything else happens. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. Come on. What, no, what the fuck is this? Come on, like, that's a complete stranger. Oh, see, see, because now I'm starting to put two and two together. What if this bitch is a goat, you know? What if that was like a little setup, you know? What if the dogs led them, led, you know, the biker or the bikers to old girl, and then old girl is going to, you know, is going to do something with the boys. Pause? No pause. Kind of pause. I don't know. You know? What, if, what if it all was a setup? Just saying. What if this bitch is in cahoots with... What if, the, what, if, what if her... What if that's her dogs? You know? And then she leads them to like her house or like or like somewhere sus, right? And, and you know, the same dogs... That were that were that were uh, chasing them. Go fuck them up. You gotta think about that. Cause where does she come from? Huh? She just came out of nowhere. Just saying. Take everything into consideration. Just saying. Cause she came out of the cut, like she came out of the blue. Like, where the hell she come from? Really hope the two friends never bike past that house again. Number six, Scud Newbie is going to a local hangout spot, so he decides he may as well make a quick YouTube video along the way. The roads are slick with rain and visibility is lower than normal, but Scud has skateboarded this route a thousand times before and isn't worried. He is about one street away from his destination when he makes the mistake of looking down for only a split second. <laughs> that car almost hit my... <laughs> Watch again and you can tell this was a very close call. The vehicle passes by way too closely and doesn't even have time to lay on the horn. Scud Newbie laughs it off and keeps moving. It's hard to say who is at fault, but I'm glad everyone is alright. Number 5. It's after midnight and a YouTuber named Angie, the green-eyed angel, is exploring a ghost town that is completely abandoned. She isn't even finished the introduction to her video before weird stuff starts happening. It took me a couple of listens, but I can actually hear the wind whispering her name here. Abandoned ghost town. Hopefully you can see it behind me. I swear, I just heard my name. Oh, yeah. Apparently, the wind has other things to say as well. Strange noises continue to follow Angie as she sneaks through old buildings filled with spider webs and rotting architecture. I mean, you cute and all that. You know? And I have a thing about females with, like, glasses. You know? So, like, I mean, you cute and all that, but I'm just saying, like, in all due respects, I mean, no harm when I say this. <clears throat> like, 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 like I said, you cute and all that, but... I mean, no harm. I mean, no disrespect. Just saying. And it's probably, you said it's after midnight. 
and you're in a haunted area, it's probably like two or three o'clock in the morning. Definitely fuck you. After about 20 minutes of exploring, Angie stops and thinks she sees a grayish figure looking back at her. Oh, yeah? Oh, I thought Four I stepped. Steps from behind send her screaming into the night. Number four. A YouTuber named Darren's Northern Life is doing some last minute hunting at the end of the season. He sees a parked truck early on and knows that other hunters must be around, which means everybody should be extra careful. A short while later, he finds himself in one of the worst situations a hunter could ever possibly imagine. Oh my goodness, that bullet just came over my head. Oh, damn! Darren hears the shot whiz by his head and scrambles for cover behind some trees. The other hunters still haven't noticed they're firing on another person and seem to be out of shouting range. This guy's gonna fucking kill me. Darren scrambles to safety and can't even believe what just happened. Later, he goes back to the truck and records their license plate. They just so happen to be coming back as well. Wait, is something wrong? Everything alright? Uh, somebody shot at me. They claim it was a different person and not anyone in their party. Without any concrete evidence, I don't think there is much Darren can legally do besides upload the video and make the event public. Let me know if you think he has enough evidence to press charges based on what you've seen. Number three, with a Ouija board in hand. You want to see some magic? I got you. I got you. Hold on. Red flag, bitch. And a YouTuber named Contagious Noise takes her girlfriend and her sister to an old barn that's just beyond city limits. They are positive that this barn is very haunted and therefore the perfect place to contact the other side. The group laughs and carries on playfully at first, but it isn't long before the situation grows alarmingly serious. Tell me if it really looks like the pointer is moving all by itself here. I'm my grandma, I'm not doing it. Garrett? I swear on everything. I'm not. Look, I'm my fingers. Look, I'm not. I'm not doing this. Soon they contact the spirit of a four-year-old who could possibly be named Ryan. They are trying to ask him more questions when out of nowhere it spells out the name Grace, which is the name of one of the girls. The spirit doesn't seem to want to give any real answers. Sometimes the Ouija board simply spells letters at random. Just when they get the feeling that a spirit is messing with them, a random noise confirms their suspicions. Or ask who the four-year-old was. Why they're here? Do you hear that? Yeah. Each one of them promises that they are not playing a joke and they decide to try again. This time the Ouija board spells out a single word. Help. Goodbye. Number two. Dig it. Anthony lives around a bunch of abandoned farmland that he has always wanted to explore. So he takes his camera and spends the whole day poking around. He doesn't know anything about the history of this land or why it was abandoned. But the more he discovers, the less alone he feels. Who's banging? Hello? The buildings are all single-story structures in various states of decay. And each one is somehow distinctly lonesome in its own way. By the time he comes across the main house... He is very jumpy and sends his eyes on him from afar. Tell me if you hear whispering during this part when he opens the door. I guess it could just be the creaky springs of an old screen door or something. 
but it really does sound like it could be voices. Anyway, the inside of the house is pretty well kept, especially compared to the other buildings. Yet the unrelenting, unholy aura only grows stronger with each step he takes. At one point, an abandoned nursery room literally makes Anthony nauseous. Surely something bad must have happened here. This was a kid's room. And I feel so uneasy. I feel dizzy. Anthony manages to check out the rest of the house. Come the fuck on. Like, you just said you feel dizzy. Now you about to pass the fuck up. Because now you're in the basement, bitch. Red flags on 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 red flags. Even the basement without incident. He's ready to leave altogether, but there's just one final surprise left for him on the way out. What the f was that? Something really keep the door. The door abruptly closes with a short and impolite slam, the exact kind that homeowners use when they are upset with someone for being at their door. I don't think Anthony shut the door by himself because he was out of arm's reach when it happened, and maybe it's just me, but I think I can see some kind of shadow- Hey, babe. Hey! I've been farting all day, yo! No. And I just had some- I just had some time. Nest in the window on the right. Coincidentally, in the same room he was just in, before we get to number one, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying my narration. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. I recently released the music video for my song Dreamland and we may have caught something paranormal at the 55 second mark. Tap the circle icon in the top right corner, then tap my music video and let me know what you think it is. It's a proven fact that generosity makes you a happier person, so if you're generous enough to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it, then thank you. This way, you'll be notified of the new videos I upload every Thursday and Saturday. Number 1. A YouTuber named Jack Wagon has many videos demonstrating his apparent ability to manipulate objects using nothing but his own energy force. Here, he circles his hands over a lock while concentrating deeply. It isn't long before he gets results. Not only is Jack able to push the lock over without touching, he is also somehow able to keep it balanced at a weird angle for almost 10 full seconds before falling. The only explanation I have for this is if there was some kind of magnet underneath the table, which I guess is possible. Next, Jack takes a steel fork in both hands, and envisions the utensil becoming soft like butter. He ties the fork in a knot with his bare hands in a few simple twists. I'm honestly not sure how hard this really is to do, but it sure looks difficult to me. I'd really like for someone to tell me if this is a real display of energy manipulation, or just some kind of trick. Most Get the fuck out of here, yo, what? At planned events, but when fans reach out to them in their own personal home, it usually doesn't end well at all. Wow. Anybody that actually believes number one, come on. You can't like, come on. Unless, unless I see it actually in person or unless I give you like a real metal fork in person. Like, like, like I gave it to you. Now you don't already have it. I gave you a metal fork, and you did it, and you put it in a knot, right, with ease, and I see that shit in a person with my own eye sockets, then, okay, now we talk, okay, cause I'm, mm, mm, nah, yeah. Man, but yeah, like I said, like, if you got a dog, and they, they, they barking at what, what you, what you think is nothing, get the fuck up out of there, ASAP. Because a lot of you not, dogs can see shit that we can't. They can scent shit, they can smell shit, hear shit, you know? And time and time again, I keep saying, no matter how beautiful or fine 
a girl is. If she doing some weird shit or she doing some fucked up shit, your beauty, your fineness, I don't see that shit anymore. I can see red flags all over the fucking place. And this, and I'm 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 either defending myself or I'm already six miles out. Just saying. I don't care how you can you can have a fat ass or you can have top if you don't know what top means. It means breasts, boob, boobies, all that, right? You can have thighs on thighs, right? You can have some beautiful ass lips, but as soon as you doing some weird, f sus, fucked up shit, then all of that is just you, you're, 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 you know, your big ass butt, you know, your top. You know, your lips, your thighs, all that shit is out the door. And I'm just seeing red flags. And I need to get the fuck up out of there. That's all I'm saying. Sup. I don't know why I was about to say sup, though. Keep it cool. Keep it classy. And I love you. Stay happy. My family.